The anime starts with a teenage Cha Hyunsu being on a social media website commenting about different things such as cars. While he is busy doing this he receives a text message from his mom asking him if he is sure he doesn't wants to go. He proceeds to ignore the message and throws away his phone showing he doesn't wants to go. He then screams that he doesn't wants to go on a shitty trip like this. His mother is standing just outside his room and says that he has been avoiding her calls and hasn't come out of his room in a while. And that this may be the last trip before his dad goes on a long business trip but he cuts her off saying that he doesn't wants to go and that he doesn't wants to hear her fucking voice. He begins to play a game with his friends and his mom messages him that they will be back soon and she reminds him to eat well. In the car going to the trip his father is angry at him and asks his mother when his son is going to start acting like a real man but she doesn't reply. He then complains that his son lives in solitude all the time and goes off on her asking what kind of mother she is who can't even control her kids. His daughter then tells him to stop blaming their mother. He then complains that she is now rebelling too and that it's not fair that his family is such a big mess. She then screams at him like the rebelling kid she is that he doesn't comes home often and refuses to take any responsibility. He then sighs and starts blaming his son that he should have told him that something needs working out. Hayunsu then tells the two to stop as this is a business trip but he starts complaining, telling her that she blames everything on it. She then starts to pour some water to calm everyone down. We are now shown a truck coming from the opposite side whose driver is bleeding from his nose. He then turns around and apologizes to his daughter saying that he gets mad every time he sees his son. His daughter then screams at him to look ahead and as he does he sees a truck coming towards the car but he is unable to do anything and the truck hits so the family is now a literal mess on the road. We now see Cha sleeping on his bed. His phone starts ringing but he doesn't picks it up. After it rings a few more times he picks it up and asks, Who the fuck is calling? To which the person on the other side asks him if his family is Hyansu. He confirms this and then the person tells him that his family is also on the other side now. At this he gets shocked and drops his phone and we get told that he is a loner who lost his entire family and is alone now and inflicts self-harm. We now see a person mowing a lawn in front of a building. As Cha passes by the mower hits a rock causing one of its blade to begin flying and hurl towards him but it passes right past him and hits the tree behind him but he is unfazed as he is in a mo phase. The person comes towards him and wonders how the blade managed to do that and apologizes to him. He then says sorry there isn't anyone to talk to here and Cha responds by saying that's because most of the residents here are shitty. The person then asks him what brings you here and Cha softly replies that he's just moving in. But the person can't hear him and asks him to speak loudly. Cha replies a bit loudly and the person says that he heard that someone was moving into room 1410 and asks if it's him and if he's by himself. He then replies softly that it's just him. The person again can't hear him and asks him to speak loudly and Cha repeats himself a bit louder. The person then says that you look too young to live on your own but everyone has their own reasons and asks him when his luggage is coming. Cha replies that it comes in the afternoon. The person then says that he can go ahead and when his luggage comes he should come to the security gate as there are some things he needs to tell him. Cha thanks him and goes inside the building. The person then says that he speaks very softly and suddenly realizes that he is bleeding from his nose and is shocked at this. Cha puts his two bags on the ground and stands in front of the window and sees a small village from it. He closes the curtains and sits down besides his bags and curses and wonders how this could have happened. We now see the scene of his family's funeral where all the other family members are wondering where he is and call him a bastard for not attending his family funeral and say that he is making his own family cry in their graves. Cha shows up and stands right in front of his pictures and everyone judges him on the way he is dressed and the fact that he didn't take his shoes off. He then says that he checked things out and he doesn't wants to go our and throws down three books and says that these they total up to $2,000 and screams that they want him to live on these measly savings. Everyone else there is shocked at this. He then screams and calls his dead parents incompetent and asks them how he is supposed to live with this. Everyone else there gets mad at this and they rush to him and drag him out while beating him and throw him outside. He then sits and calculates his money and thinks that with the money he has he can last a few days and says that it won't work and so he will sell the family house and live in a small apartment. He then breaks into tears and thinks that if he did that then he might make it. While sitting in his small apartment he thinks that he should kill himself. He takes his phone out and marks the 25th as suicide attempt on his calendar. Cha is on phone with the internet company and asks them what time will come and he is angry that they will be late and he angrily puts the phone down and asks himself what he will do for a whole day without internet. He then unpacks his desktop PC 
and then sets it up on top of a few boxes. He then sees that there is no internet so he lies down on the floor and sighs. He then spots a spider walking on the wall and thinks to himself that this sucks. He then hears a voice what are you going to do about it. He then gets up and asks what was that. In his security camera he sees that the guard is at his apartment's door. He opens the door and the guard tells him that he's just here to remind him just in case he forgot to come to the security as there are a few things that he needs to tell him. Cha then asks him what's the problem and the guard tells him that the building is in the middle of a lawsuit due to complaints about shoddy building repairs and asks him if he is interested to sign the petition but he is as interested as girls are in him and says that he had a long day and asks him to leave him alone and he accepts. The guard then offers him a bottle of juice and says that it's a welcome gift to the new residents of the building and says that it's okay if he wants to refuse. He accepts the gift and sees a girl arguing with his mom that she will come back in case this audition doesn't work and that this will be the last time and she then tells her mom that she doesn't has a sponsor as she isn't doing anything like that and scream goodbye. She then looks at him and starts leaving. She then says that she is starving and doesn't wants to eat out but she has no choice and then she notices that she is bleeding from her nose and blames her diet. Cha thinks that she is an entertainer, but she won't get far. He then thinks that if he hadn't gave his hand away would things be different. He then lies on the floor and watches TV during the night. He thinks the show is boring but he suddenly hears some footsteps. He thinks that is Jin but realizes that it's the girl he saw earlier. He then hears her go to her room and she screams that she has gained another KG and whines how long she has to starve like this. Cha then thinks that the room's soundproofing is trash. He then presses his ear to the wall to hear her clearly. He hears her praising her cat as she feeds her and he thinks that cats have it too easy. He then hears her say that she will go bath now and he decides to stop listening and goes back to watching his show. He then imagines her bathing but then quickly stops thinking that's gross. He then thinks that his next door neighbor is an aspiring entertainer so maybe this place isn't as bad as he thought before. But he suddenly hears a loud noise of a girl playing rock music on her guitar. He then says that he takes it back and that this place sucks. It's now been a week since Cha moved into his small apartment. Cha says that he hasn't been feeling well because he has been eating junk food the entire week but he didn't want it to live long anyways. While playing his game he realizes that a guy has been sitting there for the last five days. And another woman has been standing there for the entire last week and wonders if they got a stroke while playing the game he then notices that she moved a bit and wondered if that's a keyboard macro to not get kicked off. He then sees a person typing in their chat that they have been bleeding from their nose and keep hearing a voice in their head to kill their parents and ask for help. But everyone else in chat thinks that they just want attention and bully him. Cha thinks that they all are losers. He then hears the music again and says that he can't take it anymore this early in the morning and tries to call the security office. But no one picks up. We see a person try to go to the roof. But he finds that the way to the roof has been blocked as the door is locked. He then decides to light a cigarette and smoke but a girl calls him Mr. Mobster and tells him to stop smoking as this is a no-smoking building. He then says that he didn't smoke inside before and that he isn't a mob. The girl then asks him what he is and he replies that he is a good fella and she says that's so lame. She then tells him to go smoke on the roof as the entire floor reeks from cigarette smoke smell but he tells her that she's blind if she can't see that the gate is locked. She then asks why is it locked and he says that he doesn't know. He then asks her what she is doing up here and he sees a lighter in her hand and realizes that she is here to smoke too and he says that she is underage. And she shouldn't preach to others about smoking when she smokes herself. She then walks away telling him to mind his own business and he threatens her with telling her brother and she tries to bribe him with a burger but he refuses to accept it. He then says that he should go ask someone to open the gate but not today as no one is at the guard office and wonders what's wrong with the old guard. Cha dreams about his father fighting with another person about a settlement and asking who hurt his son and he hears a voice that no one will protect you. At this he wakes up and picks his phone up to check the time and he sees the message that the delivery guy dropped his package at the door and he thinks that it must be his ramen. He sees that his package had been opened by someone and sees a trail of ramen packets leading to the lady's room. As he enters the open room he sees a pool of blood and thinks if it's from her nosebleed but thinks that the blood is too much. He hears a loud eating noise and wonders why she is eating her ramen and suddenly sees a bloodied cat collar on the floor. He is then shocked as he sees her pick up the collar and spit out a bone and thinks that she is eating her cat. He gets scared and slowly backs up but as he does so he steps on a ramen packet making a loud noise and hears her say something to eat. He then runs back into his room and locks it and hides under his bed. He then hears her walk outside coming towards her room and she loudly knocks on his door. We now see a person walking towards the building late at night while talking on his phone after his job. 
He says to the person that he will be working late again tomorrow, and the other person tells him that he should have gone to a different company. The other person says that he isn't doing anything special at the moment, but he tells him that he should think about something as time is not on their side, but suddenly he loses his connection and he tries to call the person again, but is unsuccessful. He then feels that someone is behind him. He turns around but sees no one. A large person then appears in front of him and he is shocked to see him and looks scared. Suddenly the person attacks him making him drop his phone and he himself falls to the ground all bloodied up. The tall person then drags his dead body. We are now shown Cha again who is hiding under his bed and wonders to himself if he is still dreaming. He remembers the arm he saw grabbing the cat's collar and thinks to himself that it wasn't a human arm. He then hears his doorbell ring and wonders to himself if a monster can ring a bell. He then hears a voice asking for help saying that her room is in a mess and her cat is missing begging for help. He then quietly gets out from under the bed and moves to his security monitor. And as he sees that it's his neighbor he thinks that he really is losing his mind and wonders what he just saw. She then asks him to call the police for him and when he asks why she tells him that when she woke up her room was in a mess, her cat was missing and that there was blood everywhere. He then asks her why she won't call the police herself but she says that she lost her phone and then he asks her to ask the guard but she still tells him to call the police. He then asks her to show him her arm but refuses and suddenly starts bleeding from her nose and calls him a retard and asks him to open the door saying that she is starving and very hungry. Suddenly a loud guitar playing noise starts coming from the top floor. Hearing this she says something to eat and quickly runs towards the noise. He then screams at his ceiling telling the top floor person to stop the guitar right now but she can't hear him over the guitar. At this he curses and decides to turn his mop into a weapon by taking its stick off and try to use it as a weapon. He then rushes to the hallway and says that he's sure that she went to the stairs and screams that he's here, come to me and tries to taunt her. He then hears some footsteps coming from the stair heading towards him and is trembling with fear, but musters courage and tightly grabs the rod and gets ready to fight. Shaw now has a flashback and remembers his high school time when he was being bullied by a person. He was lying on the ground all beaten up and his bully says that he has a very good reason for doing this to him. But Cha keeps looking at him with a fierce look. At this the bully begins clapping and says that Cha needs to be beaten more just like an animal. He then points to a person with glasses and says that it's his turn now but he hesitates and asks if he is close friends with him and he laughs and points to the others there and says that they all were his friends. He then hands him the rod and says that he isn't forcing him and he asks him who were his close friends. At this he says sorry to Cha as he swings at him. On remembering this he thinks to himself why is he trying to become a hero, he is weak and can't save anyone. The footsteps get close and he sees that a tall person comes out of the stairways. The person sees a Cha shitting bricks and he asks him who he is to which Cha replies excuse me. The person then asks if Mr. Cha sent him and he says that he won't deal with thugs. Cha gets scared more and stutters and the person says that he is just joking and asks if he's the one who moved into 1410. He then asks what that pole is for and has a thief broken in. As Cha tries to explain himself the person sees the blood stains and leans ahead and sees more blood in a wrecked package and asks Cha who he is and he says that it's just a misunderstanding and stutters. The person screams at him asking him what he is doing telling him to speak up and Cha asks him haven't he seen a monster. He is shocked and asks what monster and Cha tells him that the monster went to the stairs and he surely must have seen it and that it looked like the girl next door. The person lifts his hand up to threaten him asking him what goddamn monster. At this Cha starts bleeding from his nose and the person says that he didn't even hit him yet and Cha collapses to the ground and the man screams hey trying to get his attention. Cha blacks out and hears a voice telling him to be honest with it saying that it's another him who lives by himself and they both are the same but different and that it is on his side and asks him what he wants. Cha now wakes up in his bed and thinks about the dream that it was very realistic. He checks his phone and sees that it's deader than his family and proceeds to turn his PC on and tries to play one of his games but he can't connect. He tried playing the rest and saw that all are under maintenance and thinks if they went on strike. He then sees that the net is working but it is very slow. And as he goes on social media he sees that all the recent trends relate to an apocalypse. At this he quickly goes to his window and opens his curtains and sees that everything is on fire and looks destroyed and it was at this moment he realized that it wasn't a dream and begins bleeding from his nose. We now see the time when the guitar girl first came to the building. She receives the usual gift from the security guard and asks him if the place has soundproof walls. She then reads a song while smoking cigarette and thinks that making its cover won't be her style and decides to cut corners. She suddenly sees that she has now used up her last cigarette and decides to grab her guitar and go get more. 
While waiting for the elevator to arrive she sees a woman with a child in a carriage and the women ask her if she moved and she replies that she is the one who moved into apartment 1510 and that it's nice to meet you. The baby suddenly starts to cry and she tries to calm her down. As she tries to get a look at the kid she only sees a piece of cloth there. The elevator arrives and the women ask her if she will get in but she refuses saying that she left wallet. She offers to hold the elevator for her but she says that she will take the next one and he stays behind and wonders what's wrong with her. Another resident of the building sees this and tells her that a year ago she wasn't paying attention at her stroller and it went down the road and the baby got killed and she has been like this ever since then and she feels pity for her. The person then says that the Lord sometimes gives people things very hard to overcome but a person shouldn't be criticized or made fun of for being unable to overcome them. She agrees and he says that it's God's will but she says that she isn't sure about that. The person then confirms that you moved into apartment 1510 and introduces himself as Jehan from apartment 1506 and extends his hand to shake with hers but she doesn't extend her hand. At this he apologizes for getting ahead of himself and offending her. She says that it's because her hand smells like cigarettes and says that he can call her Jisoo. The elevator arrives and the two get in. Jaehan asks her if she plays guitar and she says that it's a bass and then asks him what he does for a living. He says that he's a Korean teacher and is going to church as it's Sunday. She realizes that he is a devout Christian. The two part ways and she thinks to herself that he is gentle and good looking and that he is so opposite of Herring but still thinks that Herring's cooler. And as she leaves the building she overhears the conversation between Cha and the guard from the time Cha first entered the building. In the present Jisoo hears her doorbell ring and thinks to herself that maybe she was too loud and thinks that she should have kept it down. She then apologizes into her security mic and says that even though the security guard told her that no one lives next door she can't make any excuse and asks if she was too loud. She hears the other person say that they need food and is confused. She then looks in the security monitor and sees a person with a bleeding face and asks if you are okay. The person then suddenly starts to loudly bang on her door and she gets scared and rushes back and grabs her base. She likes her base a lot so she decides to put it down and picks up a baseball bat and says that if you keep it up she will call the police and after a while the banging stops and she wonders if she is gone. We now see the person who saw Cha pass out before standing in front of the door of her apartment seeing a bloodied mess on her door. We now have a flashback of when the person saw Cha pass out he heard a loud banging noise coming from upstairs. And as he went up to check he saw that scene and he wonders what's going on. He sees a broken window leading outside. Suddenly he sees Jisoo open her apartment's door slightly. And coming out with a bat in her hand, she then calls him Mr. Mobster. He tells her to stop calling him and says that he is a good fella. He then calls her noise-causing lady and asks her if she is okay. She then sees the blood and asks him what's going on. She then asks him if he saw the young lady with a bloodied face who was banging on her door. He then remembers that Cha told him that the monster looked just like the women from next door. He then tells her to step back and punches the door with all his might making crater in it. He then sees that the damage done to the door by the lady looked more severe and glances back to the broken window and doesn't believe that a young lady could be so strong but Jisoo tells him that she is telling the truth. The two place Cha in his bed and try to call 911 but it doesn't work. Jisoo suggests calling the police but it doesn't work and the man says that it seems to be a problem with the network carrier as he can't make any call. Cha begins bleeding from his nose again and Jisoo cleans his nose up and says that he seems fine and he's just asleep. Goodfella says that it won't be easy to carry Cha 14 floors down and then to the hospital as even the elevator shut down. Jisoo says that the security guard's not answering and that she will go to the security office. At this Goodfella says that if there really is something in the building it is too dangerous for you to go alone so he will go there himself and you should stay here. As the reaches the security office he sees that almost everyone in the building is there and the little girl from before sees him and calls him Mr. Gangster and he asks her why is everyone there. He then sees that the security shutters are locked. He asks her what's going on and she replies that the elevator is not working. And all the entrances are blocked by security shutters and the security office is locked and no one is answering and the phones aren't working. At this he says that they are locked out and she says that it seems so. He then asks about the old security guard and she says that no one has seen him since yesterday. He asks about the back door and she says that every path leading out is blocked and the entire building is cut off from the outside world. He thinks that it's related to the monster she asks him what and he says nothing. He then asks her where her brother went and she says that he went outside to get something and he asks what. We now see him dragging a fire extinguisher and he asks the man banging on the security guard's door to give him some room he then uses the extinguisher to hit the handle and breaks the door open. The person shouts at him saying that it's dangerous and he apologizes. 
Everyone goes in and the old man says everyone to move out and they need to open the doors first. He gets to work trying to find the switch to open the door and the little girl asks if they are free to go now and her brother says that the old man is so rude. As the old man looks for the button to open the main gate a few people in the hallway notice a person standing right outside the doors. The old man suddenly presses the button and opens the shutter and as it raises they can now clearly see the disfigured person and he starts to bleed from his face as he say he needs to kill them. The people there start to panic as the old man is peeping to check that the door opened the monster then elongates its tongue and uses it to pierce the glass door. At this the girl's brother screams that they need to close the door right now. We see Jisoo looking over Cha sleeping in his bed and on his monitor screen we see a notification about a monsterization trend. The monster swings its tongue around and makes a nearby person fall to the ground and then uses it to stab him in the head and slams his body into a nearby pillar and then drops his dead body to the ground. Everyone panics and screams and begins to run but the old man who opened the shutters earlier falls to the ground and says that he can't move his eyes. Huck then tells his little sister Yoon to step aside and aims the fire extinguisher at the monster sprays with foam making the monster lose its balance and move back. He then tells the old person to close the shutter exactly when he tells him to when he says okay. He keeps attacking with the extinguisher and the monster keeps moving backwards screaming till it's outside the building. And he signals the old man to shut the shutter and as he presses the button the extinguisher runs out of foam and Huck is close to the monster and says that he's screwed now. He tells Yoon to run as he gives up but Goodfeller rushes in and body slams the monster throwing it and him out. Yoon calls him Mr. Mobster and he tells her to not call him and she tells him to move quickly at this he sees the shutters closing. And he dives and manages to make it back into the building before the shutters close. And as he looks behind he sees the monster's tongue reach for him but it stops just before him so he survives. The monster says not enough and moves away. He then praises Huck that he likes him and finally introduces himself as Wook Pyeon and says that he's not a mobster. They then look at the dead body and Yoon hides behind Huck and Wook asks if they never saw one before and he replies that normal people usually don't and Wook says that he isn't normal but he never saw anything like this. He then remembers his encounter with Cha and confirms from the other that the monster was in male form and says that there may be more than one and Huck asks him what makes him think that but he suddenly sees a large number of monsters outside and says that you are right. The monster screams we are ready. Wook and everyone else is shocked and ask what is going out there. As one of the monsters grabs the shutters Huck says that maybe humanity has finally come to an end. Wook says that they have to block the entrance and tells the old man to don't stand uselessly and bring him something useful. We are told that on October 3rd the outbreak of monsterization of humans happened. Jisoo is with Cha and thinks that the mobster is taking too long and she grabs another baseball bat and prepares herself to go out. Two days later on October 5th Cha is seeing the burning city from his window and then closes the curtains. He sits on his bed and then on his chair and looks at his PC and realizes that he passed out for two days. He then browses the net and sees that everywhere there have been monster outbreaks with the governments attempting to stop them. He reads about many different cases of monsters on social media and comes across a video of a person seeing a monster that is more than 10 feet tall. And as the person tries to get closer the monster hits his face with a ranged attack and he dies while screaming in agony and everyone else there tries to run away. He then comes across a government announcement and sees the president urging people to stay indoors and try to conserve food and remain calm as the creatures are attracted by sounds. As he tells their plan he also starts coughing and begins bleeding from his nose. Cha thinks it's messed up and closes his monitor and grabs his weapon stick and walks towards his door. As he is about to open the door he asks himself if he wants to be a hero in a world full of monsters he puts his weapon down and tells himself to wake up and goes back to his bed and thinks that as the net is working he could have food delivered to him. But as he tries to he hears a loud noise and puts his phone down thinking that he can't do that. He then remembers about the box of food he ordered earlier and he thinks that in a crisis like this it won't be there after two days but he thinks he should still try. As he opens the door he sees a monster with half of its head missing right out his door and the monster turns towards him and says, I heard sound. The monster enters the room and closes the door behind him and Cha is covering his mouth to keep himself from screaming. The monster can't see him as he is missing his eyes. The monster then screams I can't see and says that it's been so long since he can't see. Cha then thinks that a real monster has entered his room and curses at himself that he can't move his body from the fear. The monster starts swinging around aimlessly and Cha realizes that the monster is blind. 
and thinks that as the monster is missing half of its face someone must have chopped it off so he may have a chance to kill it. And he grabs his rod and thinks that stabbing it in its neck might work. Suddenly his phone dings as it's fully charged now and the monster hears this noise and attacks it with its tongue and causes great damage to his bed. Cha seeing this thinks to himself to forget it and he is not matched for the monster and looks at his bathroom and decides to hide in it. It is now nighttime and Cha is trembling while squatting in the washroom and he wonders if the monster is still there and he thinks that as he didn't hear the front door open again the monster must still be there. He wonders how long he has been in there and says that he is hungry and decides to drink some water. And he goes to the sink to carefully drink a little water without making any noises and then returns to his spot and lies down and tries to fall asleep. He suddenly feels the need to pee and goes to the toilet to pee but he tries to do it silently but it's too dark so he can't see anything and he dozes a bit while peeing so his stream hits the water and makes a loud noise waking him up. He gets scared and thinks oh no to himself at this as the monster has also heard this noise. The monster now says, are you in there? And proceeds to bang on the door. The monster then proceeds to attack him with its tongue but narrowly misses Cha and hits the mirror in front of him. The monster then branches its tongue and attacks in many directions. But Cha survives it as all of them miss him. The monster then says not there. Cha then hears the monster walk away and then open the door and go away. At this Cha sighs in relief and falls to the ground as he breathes heavily. He then peeks out of the washroom door and sees that the monster is gone. He then slowly crawls towards his apartment's door and he sees that the food is still there and he grabs it and brings it back inside his room and closes his door. He then cooks and quickly eats the food and he lies under his bed covering himself with his blanket. He then gets up and again looks outside his window and sees lots of dead bodies of people on the roofs and sees dead people on the roofs with tents and thinks to himself that it felt too real to be a dream. He then thinks that there are tons of monsters in those buildings too and remembers being attacked by the monster before and thinks that the world outside his room is very dangerous. He wishes to himself that this was all a prank and he opens his window and looks down and sees a monster with a giant head right down on the ground and gets shocked and thinks that's freaky and quickly heads back in and closes his window. He then starts to browse the internet and comes across a guide about surviving the apocalypse. In the guide the person talks that the government has turned into monsters and won't be able to help you and these are not like zombies because if they were you would only have to avoid their bite but the monsterization starts from inside. He then lists the symptoms such as nose bleeding and hearing noises from inside their head and says that if you have any of these symptoms you should just kill yourself as your monsterization has already progressed. The person then says that you may hear rumors about there being a special cure or a safe place on Juju Island and you shouldn't listen to them. The person again tells that if you have any of the symptoms you should just die as you are a danger to others. Cha then remembers that he bleeded from his nose before and he hears a voice saying so what are you going to do now? He then says that's too harsh and looks at the date he marked on his phone and says that he is supposed to die in 19 days anyways and throws his phone away and relaxes. He then thinks about his dead family and thinks that at least you died as humans. He then hears a tapping noise from his window and goes on top of his bed and moves his curtains away to see outside and is shocked by there being a monster right in front of his window as the tapping continues. He gets very shocked to see a large ball of eyes right in front of his window and the two stare at each other for a while and the ball of eyes descends back to the ground. Cha goes on his knees and wonders what the hell that was. In the morning Cha opens his fridge and sees that there isn't much of anything to eat and closes the door and returns back and sits on his chair. He then thinks that he won't last till the 25th as he thinks about the monsters and his nose bleed and thinks that the question is will he get killed by a monster or turn into a monster himself. He then remembers Wook from before and wonders who that was and thinks who cares and goes to his anime watching website and is surprised to see that it still works. He then sees that the awaited finale of the anime Maria from the Sky will release on the 25th and he says that he wanted to see this before dying and sees that there haven't been any new comments since the 5th. He then comments asking if anyone is alive and says that he has almost run out of food and hasn't become a monster yet but he can't survive much longer and is afraid of dying alone in his room. He then thinks to himself what is he even doing and thinks that it is pathetic and as he is about to delete his comment another person with the name Crew Crew comments that they are still alive. He starts a conversation with the person asking how they are doing and the person replies that it's the worst and asks if Cha is in the process of being monsterized and he replies that he is in the process, but it's slow for him. The person says that the time varies for everyone and he congratulates him for lasting this long and Cha thinks that they are a sarcastic person. He then asks the person where they live, and the person responds if they want to share food. 
Cha says that he has no food and he might starve to death before he commits suicide. The person asks what suicide and Cha wonders to himself why is he telling a random person and explains to himself that he was going to kill himself on the 25th but he is now not sure if he will even survive till then. The person then asked if he was going to die after watching the final episode as he also won a ticket to the preview. And he replies yes to which the other person is first speechless and says that Cha's life is hopeless. Cha roasts him back saying that his personality is hopeless. Crew replies that he is in a studio apartment with his neighbors and they blocked the entrance so they are stuck in the building. Cha says that Crew should be happy as he isn't stuck in a room alone. Crew says that they need to go out and find some medicine and try to rescue people. Cha says that it's insane and why do they want to be heroes? Cha asks him why don't they wait for the army to rescue them but he says that there are people who need help right now. Crew then mentions that there is a monster with an eyeball around the windows. At this Cha is surprised and remembers the monster he saw before but as he is about to message Crew about this he leaves the chat room saying that people are looking for him. We now see Huck sitting in front of his shut monitor as his sister Yoon tells him to come as people are waiting for him. When they get to the rest of the people they arm themselves with whatever weapon they have to fight the monsters and Huck tells them to go. Cha is on the 14th floor meanwhile the rescue team is on the 1st floor. Cha thinks that even though mankind is threatened his little world would never change but it did when the internet went out. Cha sinks into his chair as there is no more internet. After a while he gets up and falls on the ground and says that he probably won't last till the 25th. While lying on the ground he thinks that the theatrical cut of Maria won't be released anyways and wonders if he should kill himself before the 25th, before he becomes a monster as then he will at least die a human. He then thinks if it will be okay for him to die like this in a shithole like this and thinks that for a loser like him it doesn't matter if the world is a human one or a monster one. He then remembers what Crow said and thinks that there is no way you can save people. While staring at the ceiling he sees a fly stuck in a spider's web while the spider moves closer to it. He thinks the spider is about to feast while he starves. And as he sees the fly struggling to get away he says you are dead no to the fly and tells it to quit struggling and feels pity for the fly but he suddenly sees the fly manage to break free and escape. As this happens he immediately sits and begins to laugh a bit. He then hears some noises from the outside of a little girl telling her dad to not go outside as it's dangerous. He then opens his room's window. And as he leans out he sees that there are some survivors and thinks that they are from room 1210. The man says that he will go downstairs and go get some food and tells his daughter to quit crying the monsters will hear you and he reminds her that he used to be in the special forces and he can climb back down and be up in no time. He then thinks that it's too dangerous. Cha sees the eye head monster standing on the ground and is panicked at this. And he tells the man to look below. And as the man looks behind him the eye head monster's eyes are suddenly in front of the man and make him fall to the ground killing him. The little girl cries for her dad but the monster is still directly in front of her window. She grabs her little sister and begins crying and screams at the monster to go away and ask for help. Cha is too scared to do anything and panics and he kneels on his bed. Suddenly a plan comes into his mind and he decides to throw his monitor down and it hits the monster's head getting its attention and he tries to make the monster come towards him. The monster rushes towards him and Cha gets away from the window and runs to grab his broom's rod he broke earlier and the monster smashes through his window and gets closer to Cha and he prepares to attack it with the rod. Cha then remembers how good his high school days were in which he helped a crippled person by holding his bag to school and he taught the person to help him prepare for his tests allowing him to get a good grade. He then remembers his time when he got good grades which made his mom very proud. And he was the star player on his football team making everyone think that he is a rock star. And he got proposed by a girl. And that one time he saved a puppy from incoming traffic. And remembers all the good times he had where everyone liked him, was proud of him and were his friend. But suddenly he hears a voice so what and is snapped back to reality where a monster rushes into his apartment by breaking his window. A voice tells him you are still nothing. He tries to stab the monster's eyes but misses and hits his bed. The monster quickly wraps itself around Cha immobilizing him and makes its hold on him tight making him choke the voice inside his head asks if breathing is what he wants. But he ignores it and manages to grab the rod and stab the monster in one of its eyes. The monster then loses its hold on Cha allowing Cha to get back and catch a breath Cha then stabs the monster in another eye while screaming that he wants to watch the theatrical version of Maria and lodges the rod deep in its eye and twists it. He thinks that he killed the monster and breaths in relief and sits on his chair and says to himself that he did this and he really managed to kill the monster. The monster then opens its eyes and begins to rise which startles Cha. A mouth suddenly appears and the monster says oh it hurts and Cha gives up and thinks to himself that this is it for him. 
The monster tells Cha that he dies now and attacks him with multiple branches of it at once and Cha closes his eyes and prepares to die but suddenly a snapping noise comes and the monster is decapitated and its head falls on his bed and it screams for a while after that it shrivels up and dies and turns grey and flattens. Cha looks at it wide-eyed and is shocked at what just happened and gets up and walks towards his window to see what happened. While doing so he steps on one of its tentacles and thinks that they are very gross. As he looks out his window he sees a guy also looking out from their window with a gun in his hand with smoke coming out of it. Cha realizes that it's from apartment 1408 he then points to Cha and then himself and then makes an okay with his hand signaling that he will make sure he stays okay. The person then brings a board out and asks if he is hurt anywhere Cha signals no and the person makes another sign that other monsters may try to make their way to him after hearing everything that just happened. Cha then signals that the person can kill them so they are fine. At this the person makes another sign that he didn't kill it as they don't die with the equipment he has with him. Cha then looks down and sees the dead man laying next to the fallen monster. The monster suddenly detaches its neck and walks off like nothing happened and Cha is so shocked to see this. He then sees the girl crying and feels pity for them and looks at the other person and sees him holding a sign asking if he wants to save those kids. Cha is extremely shocked at this. Cha is inside his room. And he remembers that the person told him that if you keep your phone connected to any numbers you will hear a beep if a monster is near you. Cha wonders if this means he can use his phone as a monster detector. He then looks at the lying sack of eyes and thinks to himself that he can't kill them but he can hurt them and binds a knife to his rod and puts his headphones on and says when you make up your mind come find me and dials a random number. He hears no beeping sounds and thinks that there are no monsters around and thinks he can do this and opens his apartment's door to head outside. He moves in the halfway trembling with fear he then sees a monster coming out of the open elevator door but he convinces himself that it's not real as there is no beeping noise from his phone and he then sees that there is nothing there. And he hears a voice from his head it was nice to stay warm at home right. He then hears heavy footsteps behind him and says to himself that it is all in his head and trembles with fear and the voice says you'll soon be dead. He tells the voice to shut up and uses his knives as a mirror to see if there are any monsters around the corner and is relieved to find that there are no monsters there. He reaches the man's apartment and knocks on his door and is surprised to find that the door opens on its own. When he heads inside he is again shocked to see the person on a wheelchair and all the boxes lying around. The person asks if he is feeling dizzy and introduces himself as Dusk Han and asks his name and Cha introduces himself. Dusk comments that Cha is not very talkative. Cha asks the man how he can save those children. Dusk then points as his leg and says that to save the children you have to go to them yourself and he tells them that when he was younger his friends used to call him Mac Driver. And he tells him that he was the person who could build anything with his own two hands. Cha still doesn't get it. And the person explains to him that he can turn the thing Cha is holding in his hands into something useful, a good weapon. Cha is surprised at this and Dusk tells him to give it to him. Dusk works on it a while and tells him that he is done now. He tells that Cha won't be able to adjust its length but it will be a lot stronger now. Cha is in awe and says that you are just like Isaac Clark. Dusk is clueless to this. Dusk asks Cha if he saw the monster with half of his head missing wandering around the hallway. He says that he doesn't knows who did that to him, but he is still alive despite missing half of its head so a knife won't be enough to kill it but electricity might be able to cook the monster. He tells him that he put an inverter connected to a battery in the backpack. The setup is a bit heavy but Cha should still be able to move around with it. And he explains to him that turning the switch on will make electricity flow so Cha should be careful and says that when hit by the electricity the monsters will probably dance around. He then looks at Cha and says that he looks like Peter Venkman but Cha doesn't get it. As Cha is about to leave Dusk tells him to come straight back after he saves those children. He then asks if he can kill the monsters with this. And Dusk replies that he can't kill them with it which shocks Cha. And Dusk tells him to avoid them as the equipment only increases his chances of survival a bit. And he tells him to just run away when he sees them but not being seen by them would be better for him. In room 1210 we see the older girl trying to calm her sibling down, who says that he's hungry and so she gives him a piece of bread. He asks what about you and she replies that she isn't hungry. He then eats the bread and says that he misses dad. Before leaving to save the children Cha asks if he can kill the monsters with this and Dusk replies that he can't kill them with it which shocks Cha. And Dusk tells him to avoid them as the equipment only increases his chances of survival a bit. And he tells him to just run away when he sees them but not being seen by them would be better for him. Cha asks if he can borrow Dusk's shotgun. But Dusk refuses saying it is his insurance. He then shows the weapon to Cha and explains it works by shooting nails by using compressed air. 
and it will break after two or three shots. He tells that the first shot will be for that monster and the last one will be for his own comfort. Cha tells him that it will never come to this but Dusk tells him that in situations like this you can never be certain about anything. He then praises Cha saying that even though he looks quite young he has survived so long it's impressive and Cha returns the compliments. Dusk tells him to go save those kids before it's too late and tell him his story when he returns. Dusk then thinks that the only problem is that Cha doesn't seem very reliable. Cha heads to the hallway and tries an elevator but it doesn't work and he thinks that he now has to resort to using the stairs. He thinks that it's strange that even despite all the noise that was made the monster still hasn't come towards him and he suddenly hears beeping noise and gets wide-eyed and extremely scared and thinks that it's coming towards him. He gets on his knee and readies himself to fight the monster. As he crouches and hears loud footsteps getting closer to him he remembers Dusk's advice to run away from the monsters and try not to be seen by them in the first place. So Cha decides to follow Dusk's advice and decides to hide inside the elevator. The blind monster appears and continues moving in the hallway towards the elevator with heavy steps. It stops right in front of the elevator and says can't see all the while Cha is hiding in the elevator shaking from the fear. The monster after a while continues moving away with making loud noises. As Cha sees the monster move away he sighs in relief, but he accidentally was too loud drawing the monster's attention. The monster peers down the half-open doors and says found you. The monster is right in front of Cha scaring him, but he still musters up the courage and stabs the monster with his weapon and then presses the button giving it a good shot. The electric shock pains the monster and makes it back off screaming. Seeing this opportunity Cha steps besides the monster and runs as fast as he could. While running his footsteps are very loud and the monster manages to hear this and attacks him by extending his arm but the monster is as accurate as a stormtrooper and misses Cha and hits a wall. Cha ducks into cover around the corner and sees the arm branching out trying to hit him but it misses. The monster then says where are you? Cha quickly thinking on his feet thinks of a plan and throws away a glass bottle towards the monster. The bottle falls behind the monster drawing its attention. The monster turns around and quickly attacks the bottle. As its back is turned towards Cha he sees this opportunity and rushes towards the monster and stabs it with his weapon in the neck and gives it a good shock making the monster fall towards screaming in pain and immobilizing it. The monster turns gray from where he shocked it and he tells the monster to stay asleep sleeping beauty and runs away around the corner down the stairs to go and save the girls. He closes the door to the stairs after passing through and falls on his knees and begins trembling, but he hits his knee and says that he has to keep going. He decides to head down, but as he begins walking down the stairway lights don't turn on and he wonders if the light sensors are down and takes out his phone to lighten up the stairs to avoid falling flat on his face. Suddenly he feels a presence behind him and is scared shitless. He is scared a lot as it wraps its arm around him and says that as far as it knows Cha used to be a person who couldn't stand it if he didn't share his hurt feelings with others. But sharing is something that requires others' permissions and he inflicted pain upon others and ran away irresponsibly. Cha breaks onto tears and says that it isn't his fault and he wasn't like this in the beginning. The presence says that Cha thinks he is all great to save those kids but he is nothing other than a hypocrite. In their apartment the two kids are huddled up like penguins all alone and are scared a lot. Suddenly they hear loud noises of something eating, and the older girl picks up a knife and trembles with fear and screams for someone to help them. She then looks at the ceiling and sees a small crack appear with a small amount of goo dripping down it and cries and softly asks for help. Cha quickly runs down the stairs until he reaches the 12th floor. Cha then suddenly hears beeping noise in his earphones and thinks to himself that there must be more than one monster. He puts the earphones in his pocket and opens the stairway's door slightly and peers out of it to look for a monster. He is shocked and scared to see a very large monster standing there in the hallway. The monster says bench press before moving away out of Cha's sight. Cha wonders why the monster said that and he suddenly sees that the apartment 1210 is right there. He goes closer to the apartment's door hoping the children are still alive. He gets a sneak of around the corner and sees the monster effortlessly smash an apartment's door to gain entry to it. He then sees a person's arm on the floor and the monster drags the person completely inside the apartment and hears the monster eating the person. Cha thinks no to him and moves to the apartment's door as quietly as he can and whispers on the door telling the kids that he came to rescue them. Suddenly a drop of goo falls on him from a crack in the floor directly above him. He touches it and is extremely shocked. He tries opening the door and is even more shocked and scared as the door opens. As he opens the door he sees a monster made of goo staring at him with its two eyes. The monster then asks you see me. Cha opens his mouth to scream in fear. But the monster suddenly envelops his face in its goo making him choke and swings its arm around throwing Cha into the room. 
Cha quickly gets on his feet and grabs the weapon with both of his hands and asks the monster where the kids are. The monster stands there menacingly and doesn't reply him. Cha then screams at the monster asking what he did to them. Dusk comes out of his apartment and points his gun at the sleeping princess and says that the kid has done well and aims at the lying monster but he sees that the monster wriggles a bit. In apartment 1210 Cha presses the button on his weapon creating a crackle of electricity as he prepares to attack the monster and screams at it asking where the kids are. The monster stands there silently. Cha then screams at the monster asking what it did to them. Cha tries to attack the monster but the monster suddenly runs away back through the hole in the ceiling. Cha is surprised at this and wonders why the monster ran away. Cha then sighs in relief while suddenly the closet door behind him opens and he sees the two kids crying with the older one keeping her hand on the younger one to not make a noise. The kids then tell Cha that their mom is in Seoul and that they came to see their dad without telling their mom. Cha looks at the state of the room and sees that the food is running low and gets the gist of it. The younger one asks him to save his dad and tells Cha that the monster made him fall down. Cha then says that no one can survive falling from the 12th floor and tells them that their father is dead and they should move on. The kids then start crying and Cha thinks that children are annoying, but he suddenly remembers his dead family and says oh well and tells them that there is a man he knows who has a lot of food and has weapons to protect them. He then asks them that they don't want to stay hungry and they don't want to stay alone here and the kids nod in agreement at both of these things. He then grabs them by the shoulder and tells them that they are now going out into the corridor where the monsters are roaming and asks them if they are ready. The kids look at him in shock. He then asks them how old they are. The older girl introduces herself as 9-year-old Sook and her 6-year-old brother is young. Cha then says that they are the perfect age for fighting monster. He tells the two to not worry and he will protect them. Sook notices Cha's trembling hand. Cha then tells them that the elevator is out so they have to take the dark stairs. He then tells them to quietly follow him as the monsters are attracted to sounds. He asks them if they are ready, and the two say yes. He the puts his earphones on and grabs his weapon to go out. He opens the door slowly and quietly moves while crouching with the kids following a bit behind him. He reaches the stairway door and opens it for the kids telling them to go in first as he stands guard for the monster. He then hears a voice inside his head saying he'll protect you and laughing at this and says that now it knows what Cha really wants and it continues laughing. Cha suddenly starts bleeding from his nose while moving on the stairs and his eyes turn red and he panics as he realizes he is turning into a monster. As Cha is starting to turn into a monster he grabs his chest and leans on the wall groaning in pain. Sook asks him if he is okay and he tells her to go ahead and tells her to go first and screams at her to quickly get away from him. The two run on ahead and Cha hears the parasite ask him if he wants to become a hero in front of those who are weaker than him. Cha then leans on his weapon and sees him in front of the parasite who tells him it can make him a hero and asks him what he really wants. Cha stays silent for a while and says the season 1 finale of Maria from the sky. The parasite is shocked at this and then Cha says that Maria's father who was believed to be dead arrived before her. Cha then says that when Maria saw her father she rushed towards him. But he was holding knife behind his back as the devil had disguised himself as her father and tried to trick her but Maria saw through it and stabbed him and said that you can't fool me because a devil always lies. On the stairs Cha is leaning on his weapon and coughing and groaning and the kids asks him if he is okay and he recollects himself and says that he is fine. Young then asks him if he is turning into a monster and he wipes the blood from his face and says not yet and then tells the two to keep going. Just as they are about to continue moving up Cha hears beeping from his earphones and takes them off and they see someone trying to smash down the door to the stairs and the monster breaks the door making it fall down the flight of stairs. The monster barely fits into the door and scares everyone. Cha then tells the two to run away. The monster rushes towards Cha and tries to punch him but misses and hits the stairs instead. Cha then jumps on the stairs leading to floor 11. We now catch a glimpse of Jisoo in apartment 1107. A TV broadcast is taking place in which a reported tells people that it's been a week since the monsterization began and he hopes everyone is okay. The reporter then says that they will try to get the most accurate information to the viewers. And they have called a few prominent intellectuals on their show to talk about the cause of the virus and calls upon his first guest who is the most prominent biologist in Korea. The monster smashes the door and barely fits into the door and scares everyone. Cha then tells the two to run away. The monster rushes towards Cha and tries to punch him but misses and hits the stairs instead. Cha then falls on the stairs leading to floor 11 and quickly gets up again. Cha then wonders what to do as he isn't sure that the monster on 14th floor is still knocked out. He sees the monster move upwards towards the kids with heavy steps and screams no. The kids try to run away and Cha gets the monster's attention by screaming loudly. 
and Cha taunts the monster saying that it likes to pick up on little kids and says that it has some muscle, and asks if it wants to test it out. He further taunts the monster by saying that it's nothing but a skinny piece of shit at this the monster gets very angry and jumps down right next to Cha smashing the stairs where it landed. The monster then says bulk up and lifts its fist up to punch Cha. Cha realizing that if the fist even grazes him a little bit he would die quickly manages to jump out of its path onto the stairs. We now see two people noticing the noise and talk that someone is trying to call all the monsters in the building by causing such a ruckus. The women there says that maybe the monster are fighting each other and the person cleaning his sword says that it is highly unlikely as monsters do not fight each other. At this Jisoo asks Jaehan what his god says about this, to not give a shit about others and hide inside by yourself. He remains quiet and she asks if that is it. Jaehan gets up and agrees to go out and sets his glasses while Jisoo grabs a baseball bat. Six days ago on October 3rd Jisoo gets tired of waiting for mobster guy and gets up from her seat and leaves Cha's room with a baseball bat. She quietly reaches the elevator and sees that it is still not working so decides to take the stairs. She sees that the motion sensor lights are broken and says that it feels like a horror movie. She then sees a drunk person standing on the stairs mumbling to himself that even though it wasn't his fault they put all the blame on him. And they have been treating him like a slave and they blame him for everything and asks how it's his fault when he wasn't the one who fucked it up and punches the wall lightly. Jisoo tries to get his attention. But he keeps talking about how it's an unjust society where people always backstab each other and it's his fault for being so naive. Jisoo thinks that he is crazy and that he is creeping her out and goes down the stairs ignoring him. The person drops the bottle which falls down the stairs and breaks right in front of Jisoo. The person then turns around with blood coming out of his nose saying that he wants to kill everyone and calls. Jisoo boss. She then asks him if he is a monster. At this he screams there you are and heads towards her. She tells him that she isn't the one who he thinks she is. He says that he will kill her. And she says that he needs help but realizes that it's too late for that as he completely turns into a monster and loses his skin screams he'll kill you at her and rushes towards her. Jisoo in panic hits him in the head with her bat making him fall to the ground and revert to a human form. At this Jisoo worries about what she has done and moves closer to him to check if he is fine but Jaehun with a sword in his hand stands in the door and stops her from getting close to her and tells her that she will get killed if she gets close to him. The monster quickly gets up and tries to attack her but Jaehun rushes forward and slashes it saving her. Jaehun is now saving Chu and attacks the giant monster and manages to make a cut on its arm making it scream in pain. Jisoo grabs Cha by his jacket and says that you were still alive and tells him that they have to move now and get out of here and tells him to run. We now see the biologist Sungdi on TV says that they think that the monsterization was caused by a virus but they don't know its nature or its infection route. The reporter then asks the biologist what are his reasons to suspect that a virus is behind all this. Sungdi says that the symptoms of delirium with extreme pathological phenomena can't be explained in any other way. The director of K-Cancer Center Ki Suhan cuts him off saying that no virus has ever causes monsterization of monsters. And this may be a phenomena of cancer cells gaining a conscious of their own and considering the extreme body changes it has to be a tumor Sungdi then tells him that cells having individual conscious is nonsense. He calmly explains that as every cell has all of our information each cell may be capable of evolving on its own. Then director of H Genetic Lab Hyunji Ju says that they both are embarrassing as they are saying absurd things and then they ask her opinion and she says that they are still researching it. Then the two ask her why she came there to say nothing and she replies that it's still better than spitting nonsense. The reported tries to calm the three down while suddenly the broadcast shuts down. We now see the monster's POV of healing the cut that Jaehan had made earlier and walking away trying to find the three. They all hide in room 1107 with Jisoo listening for its footsteps to see if it goes away or not and gives the rest the all clear as it moves away. They consider themselves lucky that the monster moved slowly. Cha then remembers Jisoo dragging him to save him and he remembers the time he first came to the apartment and sees her walking away and he thought that she looked just like Maria. And he remembers that he called her Maria when she came to save him on the stairs. He then asks where he is and Jaehan says that you must be too busy following us so didn't see that this is apartment 1107. He then tells Cha that they have lots of food here so they are just staying here for a while but they don't know what happened to the person who used to live here. Cha then says that they are on the 11th floor. He then quickly tries to stand up talks about the kids. Jaehan asks him what's the matter while Jisoo tells him that he is infected and asks him if he is right but Cha remains quiet. Jaehan asks her if she knows him and she said that he found him passed out earlier from a nosebleed. And he says that it's an early symptom. Cha asks her if they have met before. 
Jisoo screams at him to answer about the nosebleed and fainting and asks if he is infected and Jaehun tells him to be honest with him and Cha says that yes he is infected. Jisoo worries and asks him what's the current status and he replies that he keeps hearing voices in his head but nothing more. Jisoo points her bat at Cha and Jaehun tries to calm her down saying that there are some people who are more resistant to monsterization. Jisoo then asks how can they be sure that Cha won't turn in the end. Jaehun says that he's pretty sure that God wouldn't want her to bash his brains in. He then reminds her that she is the one who wanted to save Cha, and at this she puts her weapon down but Cha still holds his up. Jaehun tries to calm him down but Cha asks him to help me and says that he made a promise to help the kids and says that they are in danger. The two ask about the kids and Cha explains that they are in danger right now. He then points his weapon at Jaehun and cries to him that they have to help the kids right now. The kids are sitting on the stairs crying wondering if the monster got Cha and think if this is it and will the big monster get them too. Suk calms her little brother Young down that they have to go by themselves before the monster comes back. Young is hesitant first but Suk calms him down and the holds his hand and the two stand up and get ready to leave when suddenly a monster opens the door in front of them. We now return to the broadcast where Min Hun who is a professor of philosophy says that this phenomenon can't be explained by medical means and the reporter asks his opinion on this. The professor says that this seems like evolution at a very rapid pace and says that this must be an evolution for human survival. There is also an environmental activist who agrees with him and says that this is a punishment from God and this is a natural evolution to reduce the number of humans to let nature recover itself. Another person says that this is all because of the repressed desires of people exploding and says that nowadays people hold their desires back till they explode. He then says that the internet was the only way to relieve those repressed desires, but that wasn't enough so they have exploded now and the people are evolving into monsters as an incarnation of their desires. A priest then says that if you believe in God then there is only one answer you can come up with and he guesses that it is bad too. Hyunji says that she can't stand everyone talking about nonsense like this. Another person there says that this may be related to aliens shocking everyone there. After this the broadcast ends for now. The kids are sitting on the stairs crying wondering if the monster got Cha and think if this is it and will the big monster get them too. Suk calms her little brother Young down that they have to go by themselves before the monster comes back. Young is hesitant first but Suk calms him down and the holds his hand and the two stand up and she tells him to keep going when suddenly a monster opens the door in front of them. The monster then screams it hurts. The two then remember what Cha told him before that there will be a blind monster on the 14th floor and he is sensitive to sound so they shouldn't make any sound in front of it. He then tells them that he stabbed it with his weapon and stunned it but it may be awake by now. Sook then asks him why he didn't kill it, and he explains that he was can't kill the monsters with what he has and he was afraid that the monster may get up so he left it there. Sook then asks if they should stop breathing in front of it and he says yes. The two remain quiet while tears come out of their eyes and they do their best to not make a sound and the monster doesn't notice them and goes away. After the monster goes away the two nod at each other and hold each other's hand and they move ahead. Young says that he is scared and his legs are shaking from the fear. Sook remembers how Cha calmed her down and she grabbed her brother's shoulders and told him that she would protect him. He then cleans up his tears and the two head towards apartment 1408. The two suddenly hear heavy footsteps coming from down the stairs and get very scared and hug each other and Young says that he can't move his legs from the fear. And the two see the large monster from before heading towards them. The monster sees them and makes an evil smile and extends its hand towards them to grab hold of them. Suddenly the blind monster approaches from behind attracted by all the ruckus being made and it stands in the doorway and mistakes the large monster attacking the kids for a human and attacks it with its arm and asks are you there? It then branches the arm inside the monster and it goes clean through the large monster hurting it a lot and making it scream in pain. The large monster screams in pain for a bit and grabs at the blind one's arm and uses it to pull it towards itself and then punches the monster in the head smashing it into the wall splattering blood all over the place. Jaehun hears the loud noise and asks what that was and Cha replies that it must be the muscle freak. Jisoo then remembers her encounter in the elevator before all this with two kids who were fascinated by her base and asks what that was and she as she is about to answer the younger one cuts her off asking her if she can shoot with it and she replies that no she can't it's not a rocket launcher. And the kid asks her what that hit. And the older girl is embarrassed at this and Jisoo replies that it's a bass guitar and she says that it's very strong and she says that she can kill a monster with a single shot with this. The older girl tells him that he should behave himself and apologizes on his behalf. Jisoo says that there is no need as he is adorable. Young then grabs her leg and tells his sister that he is adorable. 
Jisoo sees Suk holding pear juice and asks her about it and she says that her dad is a heavy smoker and pear juice is good for heavy smokers. She says that they took it without telling their mom and Jisoo asks about their mom and Young says that she lives in Seoul and Suk tries to stop him. As they reach the 12th floor the kids get off the elevator and she says that their parents are just like her. Cha tells her that the kids came all the way here to meet their parents and Jisoo says that she knows and Cha asks if she knows them and she replies that a little bit and asks about their father and Cha says that he's dead making Jisoo curse. He then says that he should tell her in advance that the kids are not infected. Jisoo then remembers what she did to Cha before and apologizes for it and Cha says that there is no need for it and that he understands it. Jaehun says that he doesn't think there are any monsters nearby and the three move out. And the two rush up the stairs. The two kids are running together on the 15th floor as they can't go down to apartment 1408 as the monsters are fighting each other. They go and knock on all the doors on the floor hoping to find someone to help them and they try to head into a hallway but hear loud footsteps approaching them and they both get on their knees from the fear and are unable to move. They see the large monster holding the blind monster in its hand and dragging Tit heading towards them. The monster stops and throws the blind monster out the building through the broken window and heads towards the two. Sook covers Young's eyes and tells him to close them as they both break into tears. As the monster heads towards them the woman with the stroller from before come out into the hallway and sees them and stands in between the kids and the monster and tells it to leave them alone. Cha and the rest see the smashed hole as they ran up the stairs and wondered what happened there and realized that this is not human blood and wonder if there were monsters fighting each other. Jaehan says that he saw monsters fighting each other only once and Jisoo notices that there is only black blood here so the kids may still be fine and the trio hurry up to try and save the kids. The woman with the stroller from before come out into the hallway and stands in between the kids and the monster and tells it to leave them alone. The monster still keeps heading towards them but she stands firm and scratches her head and asks the monster if it will do that for her. The monster kicks her sending her flying into the wall breaking a few of her bones like glass. She sees the damaged stoller lie and is reminded of the incident and screams for her baby. We then see myung Ya lying in the corner of her bed saying that she won't have a divorce because if she does then who will care for her baby and she can't be deceived. She then hears a voice from inside her head telling her that her baby is gone. She says that she won't believe the lying demon. The voice again tells her that she needs to face the reality that her baby is dead and hasn't been here since a year ago and tells her that while she was looking away her baby got killed but she cuts it off screaming for it to shut up. The voice tells her that the stroller is empty and tells her to go ahead and look into it and asks if she is afraid of the voice being right and it tells her to look straight into it and she does and sees a hallucination of her kid and says that you are a liar and moves her empty hands up and thinks that she is playing with her baby. The large monster steps on the stroller destroying it making Ya burst into tears. As the monster approaches them Cha and the others arrive just in time and rush towards them. Ya stands right in front of the kids and says that she knew that her kid wasn't alive in this world and cries as the monster punches her in the face making her fall to the ground killing her. Cha and the others run towards the kids and tell them to run towards them while the monster is distracted and the two run towards them. And Cha tells them to hide behind them and the three stand in front of the monster and wonder how they should stop it. The monster rushes towards them to fight them. But suddenly they see someone jump on top of the monster and grab it by the neck and they wonder who it is and they think that it's Ya but they are startled as she just got punched by the monster so how can she manage to do this? 